Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This Thatter the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Jeremy Adams, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. In brightest day. In blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might. Beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome back to Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast. I am Phil, joining me as always, master of all cores, it is. I am Will, hey everyone. And we're here, kids, at last. The conclusion of Blackest Night, our 13-week journey. <laughs> boy, the first boy, the first quarter of uh, 2024 must be done, huh? Pretty much, yep. <laughs> That's right, kids. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> oh, the whole year so far. All right. So, yes, tonight we will cover uh, – Green Lantern 52, Blackest Night, number 8, Green Lantern Corps 47, Action Comics 890, and Untold Tales of the Blackest Night, number 1. But before that, yes, uh, I think I promised last time, yes, I did get Green Lantern number 9 this week. We, you shared a, a little panel of it with me that looks pretty Oh, cool. yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how much I should spoil because, yes, Hal goes into the Earth and discovers the secrets of this ring uh where you know the whole the whole deal why he couldn't leave earth and it, it it's all here and then mm-hmm. let's just say he fixes with the problem maybe he gets, he gets to leave earth but uh okay so i did show you the caption where someone says because this is the new millennium and i am the last of the new guardians do you know who said that i don't know who said that Hmm. Who? Who is? Who was a? Who was a new guardian? Who could be the last new guardian? Hmm. Ah, uh, could it be our old friend Tom? Tom, sweet. Yes. <laughs> Jeremy Adams has given us Tom. Yes. Who was uh, nice. kind of wrangled into some of this mystery of the uh, the mm-hmm. what's going on with this ring? So. Uh, oh, he's the last new guy. I. That's what he says. So, I've a lot of the new guardians are dead. I believe. I was gonna say, is Floronic Man still around? Because wasn't he? He might be. Yeah, I don't know. Um, But uh, yeah, when you when so Phil just sent me the 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 slice of the panel that showed um, the Millennium logo, and we've been talking about what we want to do for our two hundredth episode show, and um, yes. And I think that that was a sign from the uh, the Guardians or something that we should probably do Millennium at this point. <laughs> They're angry gods. <laughs> Little angry gods. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice, nice, nice splash page here. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I think you're going to be happy with this because uh, then how once he once he's free, he's able to fly to Oa. He gets in a fight with some of these new Green Lanterns, but then he makes it to Oa. And right as he's getting attacked by some of these new Green Lanterns, they get mowed over by a big green tank. And guess who's in this big green tank? Who's in the green big big green tank? Joe. <laughs> Joe. Oh, and Joe and Kyle are coming out of uh, last issue, right? That's right. Uh, I mean, I, we don't see Kyle's, Kyle's backup talking. story. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, oh, but uh, this this uh, this issue's backup story is uh, Jessica. Oh, cool. It looks this, like she's wearing green now. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, because, uh, of course, they're, um, she even makes, like, a quick, like, uh, I think it's, like, internal uh, comment, but she says something like, uh, Something about she wore yellow for a while, but uh, uh, oh, one time I basically tripped and ended up as a yellow lantern. That's bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so no, nothing about how she got back in it, but uh, 
Okay. Yeah, I guess, I, I guess they, they have her in there. It seems like that um, may, basically is their inside mole because, the, you know, the, the head of the United Planets, I guess, uh, thinks Jessica is like sw- has like sworn her loyalty to him because she I think she even thinks she's like, yeah, they wouldn't buy it from like Hal or John or Guy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but her. OK. Yeah. <laughs> nice. but anyway, yeah but yeah but that just got backups written by uh sam humphreys didn't he write some of those green lanterns issues i think he did i think he wrote a yeah. lot of them if i remember right yeah i kind of like that that they're bringing back like ron mars wrote the cow back up and now sam humphreys wrote the jessica back up yeah that is cool that's very cool so basically we've kind of shown where everyone is uh but except for well, we know Guy's mission, but but Simon really we haven't seen. We don't know where Simon's at at the moment. That's true. And I mean, last we saw Simon, he was um, he was able to talk to dead lanterns, mm-hmm. right? I think so. Yeah. And those lanterns were coming out of rings that uh, they're they're rings, if I remember. I mean, that it's been what two years ago at this point. I don't... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. And it, okay. And it looks like the next, but the backup in the next issue, uh, looks like it is Guy Gardner's uh, Lobo. <laughs> oh. Nice. <laughs> so can't wait to see that. I, uh, I think, I don't know. I feel like the we're we're picking up steam now, and I I think because I was looking at pages. And I, it felt like a lot of those earlier issues, the the page count was sh- maybe shorter. I don't know. I, I'd have to look it up to see. But it feels like we're getting more story now, you know, per issue. And I don't know if that's just a feel or if that's actually true or not. But it, it feels like we're getting more. It does feel like we're picking up steam, like you said. I think, and then two, maybe it's just because we got past the, uh, the, the crossover that we had to be a part of. Yeah. <laughs> You know, when you do like what the first two or three issues, and then you have to stop and do a crossover, maybe that killed some of that momentum. So I, I, you, yeah, I think so. But I think it's picked back up. So I, I'm, and I think we're they're releasing a trade of the first. Is it first four issues plus Night Terrors? Is that what's coming out? I think that's what you said. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Cool. Very Night cool. Terror. <laughs> all right should we get to these issues let's do it sir what's going on we're gonna wrap it up kids here we go green lantern 52 from may 2010 lifeblood writer jeff johns penciler doug mank inkers christian alamy doug mank rebecca bachman and keith champagne uh colorists randy mayer gabe edelab and carrie strash Strachan, uh, letter of Rob Lee, and editors Eddie Berganza and Adam Schlaman. Uh, this one begins with the members of the Lantern Corps fighting off uh, the swarm of the Black Lantern Corps that's emanating from the planet Zanshi, also a Black Lantern in space. We see the Black Lanterns glowing with the symbol of the White Lantern Corps. They're being destroyed, but suddenly they stop fighting and start heading towards Earth specifically Coast City, where the main battle of the Blackest Night is going on. Green Lantern John Stewart uses his ring to contact his partner in the core, Hal Jordan, who's in Coast City, to warn him about the Black Lanterns heading his way. Meanwhile, at Coast City, Hal is watching a Sinestro, uh, as, as we saw in Blackest Night 7, bonded with the sentient embodiment of life and is using the power of the White Light to destroy the Black Lanterns. While reveling in this new power, the ring talks to Sinestro's mind, who sees the history of the universe through the entity's eyes. From its creation at the dawn of the universe, it was brought to Earth where it made its home within the planet's core and through its power started creating the first sentient creatures on Earth. As the creatures evolved, uh, it gained the will to move on its own and thus willpower was born. Along with the sentient embodiment of that willpower, Ion! It then flashes forward thousands of years where we see insects flying over the land, trying to survive, thus creating fear, as well as the sentient embodiment of that fear, Parallax. Later on, as life grows, so does love, creating the predator. (laughs) The embodiment of love is the predator. 
uh, the sentient embodiment of love. Then we see that for the very first time, the sentient embodiments of the other four emotions that were previously unknown. Avarice as a snake, rage as a bull, hope as a bird, and finally compassion, a squid. Uh, while Sinestro is being flooded with this information, Necron attacks him, severing him in half, trying to draw out the entity and destroying it. Hal tries to get the other new guardians to help Sinestro out, but suddenly they experience seismic activity, which Hal's ring registers as being caused by Xanchi's gravitational pull. Hal calls John and tells him to destroy the planet, but then the planet fires a beam at the Earth into the ocean just outside Coast City. The beam creates a tidal wave that threatens to destroy the city, but Hal manages to stop it. The other lanterns check on Sinestro when Indigo One tells them that she cannot heal Sinestro because her ring is telling her that he doesn't have any wounds on him. Which the Adified surprise in considering that Necron severed him in half. <laughs> Uh, Howe is suddenly attacked by a swarm of black lanterns and is told by Black Hand that despite the efforts of the lanterns, the white light will eventually be destroyed and everyone in the universe will be dead forever. As that's happening, John leads the others in an attack on Zanchi, destroying all the black lanterns in the way, including John's late wife, Kat Matui, who is destroyed by the combined power of John's and Fatality's rings. John then notices his old partner in the core, Drick, who tells him that Zanchi's connection to the Black Lantern is in its core. The Lanterns then find a, a fusion of Black Rings that seem to be commanding the planet. They then combine their powers and sever the planet's connection to the Black Ring and destroy the planet, er, uh, and destroy the planet permanently from Coast City. Uh, suddenly, a bright white flash of light occurs that manages to bring pain to Necron and Black Hand, as well as destroying a huge number of Black Lanterns. We then see that Sinestro is being healed by the White Light and orders everyone to stand aside as he resumes his attack on the Black Lantern Corps. <laughs> to be continued. Alright, so, thoughts? Leads right into Blackest Night number 8, uh, and it's, you know, I, I think it nails Sinestro because... You know, it's about ego, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And then we get the, basically the origin of all the uh, entities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the name, I think, do we get the, yeah, we get the names of all of them, too. I think this is the first time we have the names of all of them. Mm. Mm. Let me open this up here. Yeah, if I remember right, once Hal was separated from Parallax, something grabbed Parallax, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah, because, yeah, was that when Hammond, like, freaked out? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, great. Uh, again, great art in this. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially, like, those space scenes and stuff, yeah. Um, but, yeah, like I said, we get a crash course on all the uh, entities and... Again, kind of setting up our final battle here. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, it puts everything puts everything in place for what goes down in Blackest Night number eight. I mean, it's but it's important, right? I mean, this, this is again, this is they did such a good job of making Green Lantern and Green Lantern Core central to Blackest Night. You know, it, it, central Blackest Night's not just eight issues. Mm -mm. It's eight issues, Green Lantern and Green Lantern Corps. That's the Blackest Night. Plus all the the other stuff you can read or not read, but that's what you need to read to read the whole thing. Oh yeah. Oh, you're talking about Sinestro's ego. You mean I am now the true guardian of the universe? Yeah. Uh, but yes, <laughs> yes, kid. That that uh, white light entity has healed Sinestro. You know, because be, you know, before he was feel, wasn't feeling it, he was kind of <clears throat> beside himself. <laughs> I think you're splitting hairs there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, let's split the difference. <laughs> nice, <laughs> very nice. All right, should we, should we get to uh, uh, Blackest Night number eight? I think so. So. Yes, this is this is basically going to be the conclusion. Then we're going to get a couple uh, epilogues here. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so Blackest Night number eight from May 2012, 2010. Uh, Blackest Night part eight. Writer Jeff Johns, penciler Ivan Reyes, uh, inkers Eau Cla- Eau Claire Elbert and Joe Prado, colorist Alex Sinclair, letterer Nick J. Napolitano, and editor Eddie Berganza. Uh, all right, so yeah, this one continues right where 52 left off. We see uh, Hal Jordan, Star Sapphire, Carol Ferris fighting against the Black Lantern Corps. We then see Sinestro still being bonded to the white entity, fighting off the mastermind behind the blackest night, Necron. Commanding everyone else to stay away from his fight with Necron, Sinestro feels that he is the savior of the universe and that Necron cannot kill him. As they are watching, Hal, Carol, the Atom, and Ganthet are amazed at the power that the white entity has given Sinestro, which Ganthet claims is nothing less than the power of a god. Sinestro uses his white power to chain Necron up, and in the same way as the Black Lanterns have been gaining power, Sinestro rips out Necron's heart, essentially killing him. His ring commands him to rise as a Black Lantern picks up his scythe and the and Black Lantern power battery. The Black Lantern transforms into Necron, who continues his battle against Sinestro and continues to try to rip out the entity from Sinestro's body. The other Lanterns notice that Sinestro is losing control of the entity, with Hal citing that Sinestro's ego is what is powering the entity, not his will to survive, and even considers joining with the entity, but Ganta tells him that it will reject him as it, as it is doing to Sinestro. However, Lex Luthor, under the control of the Orange Lantern Ring, demand, uh, demands for Ring, saying that he has the power to save the Earth. Uh, oh, hold on. Uh, screen jump again. Uh... Uh, okay, hold on. Uh, burr, 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 burr. Yeah, the uh, orange ring saying that he has the power to save the earth, but Lara Fleece knocks him out from behind with the orange lantern power battery, claiming victory over who controls the orange lantern core. But everyone hears a voice inside their heads that causes pain to them. It is the Black Lantern Martian Manhunter who attacks Hal as we see Hal's family tra- together trying not to fear. As the battle intensifies, Indigo One says something, which the Atom translates as a message that the Indigo tribe has arrived, along with the members of all the other Lantern Corps, along with the Justice Society, the Teen Titans, and the rest of Earth's heroes. With every Lantern together, they all combine their rings and attack Necron. As that's happening, Guy Gardner is possessed by Boston Brand, also known as Dead Man. Dead Man tells Hal, though, uh, through Guy, that he's been floating inside the Black Lanterns and has learned many things about them, including Necron. He tells Hal that Necron is sentient blackness and that the reason why he's wrecking havoc is because he has created a connection to the land of the living through Black Hand. He tells him that in order to stop Necron, they have to bring Black, Black Hand back to life. But Hal doesn't know how to do that. When Dead Man leaves Guy's body, leaving Guy with the same information that Dead Man just told Hal. Guy then leads the other Lanterns in a charge against Necron, but Necron doesn't strike back at them. He manages to separate Sinestro from the White Entity and tells Hal that it was he who allowed him to come back to life, just like all the other heroes who died and came back to life. Hal retorts that while Necron may have opened the door back to the living, he was the one who walked through that door and came back to life. But Black Hand attacks him from behind, saying that life has no purpose, no meaning. When Flash saves him, telling Black Hand that life doesn't give them purpose, they give life purpose. Superman then heads towards Hal, threatening to kill him, but Hal reminds him that he was killed by Doomsday, but he returned to life. Hal then heads toward the entity and bonds with him, saying that when the resurrected were given the chance, they all chose life over death. Using the power of the entity, Hal not only severed the connection between the Black Lantern Ring and Superman, but also he transformed Wonder Woman, Superboy, The Flash, Green Arrow, Animal Man, Dawn and Troy, Kid Flash, and Ice into White Lanterns, and they all attack Black Hand. The entity then commands Black Hand to live, and he, and he sees Black Hand coughing out a White Lantern Ring, which heads for the Black Lantern Central Power Battery, and commands the Anti-Monitor to live again, which destroys the battery. Now that he is alive again, the Anti-Monitor is no longer a Necron's prisoner and power source, so he unleashes his power on him, but it has no effect on the Guardian of Death, who attacks the Anti-Monitor and sends him back to the Anti-Matter universe. 
uh, while that is happening, Black Hand is coughing up a number of white rings. And we hear white rings calling out the Necron and unleashing the white light through him, destroying him once and for all. We th- there we go. That we then see the white rings calling out the names of Osiris, Jade, Captain Boomerang, Hawk, Ronnie Raymond, Maxwell Lord, Hawkman, Hawk Girl, Martian Manhunter, Aquaman, Professor Zoom, and Dead Man, and commands them all to live. With all the others looking in astonishment. As they are all watching their loved ones being brought back to life, the red lantern ring attached to the mirror suddenly stops, and she falls into cardiac arrest in the arms of Aquaman. Carol Ferris, who is still a star sapphire, uses her powers to connect Aquaman's heart to Mira's, which brings her back. When Mira asks her husband if they are dead, he just simply replies no, and they have a heartfelt embrace. As that's happening, Hawk Girl looks at Hawkman and goes by the different names she has been referred to in all her lives, meaning she remembers everything from their times with the Justice Society and Justice League. They then kiss each other as Superman tells Martian Manhunter that he's alive, which John answers that it would appear so. Suddenly, Martian Manhunter hears a voice, and we see Firestorm breaking apart into Ronnie Raymond and Jason Rush. Jason remembers Ronnie killing his girlfriend Jen in Blackest Night Number 3. As Ronnie asks the Flash where Professor Stein is, we hear Henry Hall, the original Hawk, telling everyone around not to touch him with Dove trying to calm him down. Guy then catches Maxwell Lord, thinking that he's still a Black Lantern, but notices that his nose is bleeding and releases him, only for him to disappear. We then see Jade going up to Cal Rayner and kissing him in front of Kilwog and Cal's current girlfriend, Sornik Natu. Then we see Superboy wondering who Amon Tomaz is when Kid Flash tells him that he's Osiris, who tells them both that he wants to go home. But he's not the only one as Professor Zoom goes home as well before the Flash can catch him. Captain Boomerang notices Flash and tries to attack him, only to be knocked out by Barry. Afterwards, Barry tries to look for Ralph Dibney, also known as the elongated man and his late wife Sue. But Hal tells him that they aren't there, with Barry wondering why. Just then, Dead Man starts to panic as for the first time everyone can see him and he removes his mask, saying that he isn't supposed to be here. Then Flash turns around just as Lex Luthor falls to the floor, being thrown by Larflees. Sinestro tells him that for once, Larflees has given someone something. (laughs) Larflees (laughs) is astonished at those words, but is more concerned with what is prompted, which what was promised to him in return for his help against the Black Lantern Corps, his own guardian. Gantha tries to stop Sade, but she feels that she can help Larflees. When Ganthan asks her about the Corps, she tells him that there's much to discuss about the future of the Blue Lantern Corps, as well as all the other Corps. She tells him and the others that the Anti-Monitor has returned, but their immediate threat is Black Hand, uh, who is uh, missing. Saint Walker tells them that Indigo One and her tribe are missing as well. We then see the Indigo tribe on a distant world with a new member of their Corps, Black Hand, who's in chains and wearing the symbol of the Indigo tribe. Later in Gotham City, where we started this whole thing, we see Barry and Hal at the grave of their old, all right, hold on, at the grave of their uh, of their old friend, Batman, my favorite character, where the Blackest Night started. Barry is questioning why the White Entity resurrected those that it did, bringing back the life instead of everyone else, and whether the resurrections will end now that Necron has been has again been stopped. Hal tells him that Ganthet believes that there's a bigger picture to it all and that the dead shall now remain dead ex- <laughs> except for Batman. My fight. <laughs> Hal also mentions that when Necron resurrected Batman as a Black Lantern, he didn't recognize anyone, which means th- that what Tim Drake said is right. Batman is still alive. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> I love Batman. <laughs> Barry then asks Hal about the white entity and where it has gone. Hal tells him that because he was connected to the entity, he can still feel it out there, urging everyone to break away from the past and the blackest night and into the tomorrow and into the brightest day. We then cut to a road in a forest where the police are investigating a huge crater and we see for the first time a white lantern power battery. Then on the last page, we see a verse from the Book of the Black, which is written in the language of the Indigo tribe, which is still incapable of being translated with Black Hand talking about certain stuff, um, mentioning the Guardians of the Universe, Aubin Sir, Hal Jordan, Sinestro, and the Green Lantern Corps, Monk, Atrocitus, Larflee, St. Walker, Star Sapphire, Parallax, Hector Hammond. He then finishes with the Oath of the Indigo Tribe and the words, May Compassion Guide You, 
We then see him say a few words that we translated that his name is William Hand and that he needs help. <laughs> <sighs> All right, thoughts. It has been a journey. <laughs> this issue was a journey. <laughs> Very much of a journey. Um, I'm going to I'm going to reach back to, you know, the beginning of the year. <laughs> Months ago at this point. Gene, first week of January, okay? Yeah, um and now that we've, well, I mean, okay, we still have Action Comics and Untold Tales, right? And Those Green, are Green Lantern Core. Oh, and Green Lantern Core, that's right. Um, but I really think that this is this has got to be one of the best, if not the best, executed crossover ever. Mm. Um, I mean, Crisis. Crisis was one of the first gigantic crossovers, right? I get that. This one was just so well done. Everything was on point. Everything was, you know, it was all about, at its core, you know, zombies and horror and death and life and all that stuff. And that's what they focused on in all those limited series, right? All those little three-issue series. Mm -hmm. And and granted, uh, those were... Mm, what's... They were kind of a template, right? All of them kind of followed the same pattern when you get right down to it. But uh, the zombie series returning, I mean, that's brilliant. And then Green Lantern, Green Lantern Corps, and Blackest Night. I mean, just so tightly inter interwoven storylines across all of those. I mean, it was it's just, it's been so well done. Mm -hmm. The art was great across all of those books. The writing was great. Um, even when Jeff Johns wasn't writing it, it was, you know, the Green Lantern core book. It was at times, I feel better than the Green Lantern book or Blackest Night. Oh, yeah. This event. So, yeah, this one's, I think, I, I, I really think that this is one of the best, if not the best crossovers that certainly that DC's done, but I would put it up there against almost anything, you know, as far as giant company wide crossovers go. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, and again, it's, it's another cross. Uh, I mean, it's another big event, but it's like, there's so many moving parts and it's so like intricate, but also it's like the idea is so simple. It's like life versus death. Yeah, exactly. And the fact that, it didn't necessarily interrupt creative teams that were telling their own stories at the yes. time with those individual limited series and, you know, with the, uh, with the zombie, you know, issues, which yeah. I still think is, you know, genius, but uh, yeah, I, I think this was, you know, at this, and I don't know the answer to this. So this is something that we're going to discover together. Okay. Um, I kind of really feel like this was the pinnacle of, of John's on Green Lantern. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, we still have War of the Green Lantern coming up. War of the Green Lantern's coming up. We still have um, what's uh, Wrath of the First Lantern, which I think is his final story. Is that? I think it's... it's uh, that's deep into the New 52. That's like yeah, a year or two into New 52, I think. So... You know, there's still lots of good stuff coming. I just don't know if it reaches kind of the heights of of this. I mean, although, you know, when we talk New 52, there's going to be four Lantern books you mm -hmm. know, with the New 52 relaunch. So Lanterns were, you know, they were out selling that other character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were jockeying for first and second position. Batman, my favorite yep. character. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm this actually, you know, we've, we've talked about rereading and you know, we've been rereading Green Lantern for years now. Right. Oh, <laughs> and I know that, you know, when you look back, when we look back at the, the 90s run, you know, those issues didn't hold up uh, the, the writer whose name will not be, you know, named right now. They didn't hold up as well, you know. 30 years down the road, you know, the Mars issues, a lot of them were 
you know, better than I remember, you know, yeah. and that was surprising to me. And then there were some disappointments after Mars left and we won't get into all of that, but, uh, I'm, we are beginning. I really think, of course, I love rebirth and you know, you know that no. but I think beginning with Sinestro core war, we hit, we, we hit a bump kind of a, a, a golden age of, of green lantern stuff coming out right every month. Yeah. And that really carries through to the new 52. And this is, I don't know if this is the pinnacle of it, but it's really good. Yeah. Again. Yeah. We'll have to see. Cause again, I don't remember a lot of what's coming up. So, mm-hmm. but you know, you're true. Uh, like you said, yeah, if not the high point blackest night and says is definitely one of the highest points in Jeff Johns run. So exactly. Again, just all the moving parts and it's just well planned and thought out. Uh, and well executed. Yep, exactly. You could tell they've been kind of planning this since rebirth. And mm-hmm. and it works. It works yeah. really, really well. And, and I, I think, yeah, I think you'll agree. I don't think there's any point where it feels like they're just like dragging it out, spinning their wheels, waiting for Blackest Night to show up. No, it happened. No. no. No, it, it all builds to it, and it builds to it in a really nice work. It feels um, organic. It's not organic, organic. Yeah, natural, organic way. Um, you know, we're not waiting on it. I mean, you know, we've got weird stuff going on in the core like eight months before Blackest Night, you know, dealing with Star Sapphires, dealing with, you know, Sinestro Core and, and all those things. I mean, it's, yeah, I, you know, two thumbs way, way up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Any thoughts on the main thing, or should we get to uh, start getting to our epilogues here? Um, I think that's about it. I mean, do you have anything else that? Uh... No, I mean, I think we've been saying it all along how much we enjoyed it. For, you know, like the actual, mm-hmm. at least the actual main story and stuff. Yeah. I do have a criticism of Blackest Night. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> The Blackest Night 10th Anniversary Omnibus does not have its contents listed in the book. <gasps> and they're in rant, they're in reading order, so you don't know what you're it's just it's all there kind of just come on. I mean, For shame. The everything con- is everything else is so great. You couldn't put a table of contents in there with all the issues that you're collecting. I mean Come on, DC. Third <laughs> love their continuity. Come on. Yes. <laughs> but that's that's my only, uh, and yeah. that's you know, ten years after the fact. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> but the the hardcovers uh, that you know that came out not too long after the event, you know, because you're before the event, they actually started collecting Green Lantern Core in hardcover because before then it had been in trade only. Mm. So you had hardcovers of Core, hardcovers of Green Lantern, and then the hard Blackest Night hardcover. And then after that, we jump into Brightest Day, which is... I'm I'm actually a little excited about Brightest Day because I never... I, I, I don't know what happened. I never finished the, the Brightest Day series. I mean, I read the Green Lantern books, but it's been so long, I don't remember exactly what happened. Yeah, I'm excited. I finished it, and I can't remember. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Nice. Right. Well, I didn't remember a lot of Black as Night either. So, yes, this is. I, I, I will be completely, totally honest here. I did not either. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the stuff from the last ten years on me. I think I read once, and that. So, yeah, I have little yeah. no memory of a lot of this stuff. So, read it once and filed it away. Yep, I got gotcha. you. Exactly. <laughs> All right, should we get the Green Lantern Core? Mm-hmm. All right. Green Lantern Corps 47, June 2010. Goodbye, darkness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Writer Peter Tomasi, penciler Patrick Leeson, inkers Rebecca Bachman, Tom Guyon, Keith Champagne, and Mark Irwin. Colorist Randy Mayer, letterer Steve Wants, and editor Adam Schlaman. Uh, this one begins the aftermath of Blackest Night. We see the Green Lantern Corps on Oa in front of the central power battery. They use their Green Lantern rings to power up the central power battery. Green Lantern's Cal Rayner and Guy Gardner talk about the recent events that have happened. 
Both of them agreed that it looked difficult for them to get out of the Blackest Night. But they also agreed that they managed to pull it back together and destroy the Black Lantern Corps throughout the universe. They lead the Corps to the Green Lantern planet Mogo, who's in orbit around Oa. He greets the entire Corps around the tree. This tree has leaves that contain the images of Green Lanterns that have died throughout the history of the Corps. Moro, the keeper of the crypt, tells the other Lanterns that the leaves on the tree will never blow away and the tree will never come down as it is a testament to the history of the Green Lantern Corps. Lantern Izamot Cole tells Arisia that the Guardians of the Universe should be here paying their respects to the dead Lanterns instead of being holed up in the Owen Citadel. Arisia tells him that Sodom Yat should be on one of those branches since he died to save his home planet Daxum by turning Daxum's red sun into a yellow one to give the Daxumites Kryptonian-like powers. Moro finishes by saying that an eternal flame will continue to burn as long as there is one green lantern ring shining somewhere in the vast universe. After Moro finishes his speech, Salak comes up and tells everyone that there is one matter that needs to be addressed before they all leave, and Mogo returns to Sector 2261. During the attack by the Black Lantern Corps, Salak issued a moratorium on the redistribution and forging of green lantern rings. Since the Black Lanterns are gone, Salak lifts the moratorium on the rings and has them sent throughout the universe to seek out new recruits for the Corps, as all Green Lanterns watch as the rings fly off into space. Meanwhile, back on Oa, we see Cal and Sornik Natu standing over the ruins of what would have been Cal's mur mural about the history of the Green Lantern Corps. Cal was obviously depressed since he never got to finish painting the mural, but Sornik reassures him by telling him that after the horrors that the Corps went through during the Blackest Night, they all need something to boost their morale and something to remind them of the Corps' proud history. Cal tells her that he will never let her down as they start to hold each other's hands. Deep inside Oa, we see Salak and Kilowog looking at the images of the new recruits. Salak tells Kilowog that the recruits will be arriving shortly and transmits the fouls on the Kilowog's ring, but Kilowog declines. Salak is curious as to why Kilowog would say no to something like this. Kilowog tells him that in the last two years, he has trained and buried new lantern recruits more than he has in his 20 years as drill instructor. He then reveals to Salak that he is declining the duty of drill instructor and downgrading himself as a regular lantern. Salak accepts, but reluctantly. He puts it down as a request for a leave of absence from the duty. Salak makes it clear to Kilowog that he doesn't agree with Kilowog's intentions, but respects them anyway. As Salak begins to look for a new re replacement drill instructor, but Kilowog tells him that he's already taken care of that. He has named Green Lantern Stell the new DI. Stell accepts the position and promises Salak that he will be happy to whip the recruits in the shape until Kilowog wants his job back. In the hospital in Oa, we see... Ronian Lantern Vath Sorn waking up and sees Izamot Cole's legs attached to his body. Since both of them fought each other in the Ron Thanagarian War, Vath is obviously furious that he will be walking with Thanagarian legs from now on. Vath attacks Izamot, telling him that if he returns to Ron, he will be killed by his fellow Ronians due to their hatred of the Thanagarians from the war. He demands to know from Izamot why he gave him his legs. Izamot attacks him in anger and tells him that the reason why he gave him his legs is because he is his partner and that he would do the same thing if he were in his position. Izamot is about to cut Vath's legs off for being ungrateful before he is stopped by Princess Ayalan. She reminds both of them that they risked their own lives for each other and that they should be ashamed of themselves. Vath and Izamot both see the error of their actions and Vath helps Izamot up as the three lanterns head to the cafeteria. At the Owen Council Citadel... Uh, Guy, Guy, Cal, and Arisia talk with Salak about seeing the Guardians of the Universe. Salak tells them that the Guardians are not to be disturbed. Cal reveals to Salak that they have been they have made two appointments with the Guardians. Both were canceled. Salak tries to tell them that he will schedule them for another appointment, but Guy has had enough and breaks into the Citadel with Cal and Arisia behind him. The Guardians are obviously offended by the intrusion of the three lanterns with Salak behind them, though they tell them that they will be willing to entertain their thoughts when Arisia punches one of them. Guy and Cal manage to subdue her, but she blasts them for not helping Sodom Yat out when he needed them the most. She tells them that he was denied access to tap into the ion power when they were on Daxum. The Guardians reveal that it was the manipulations of the Guardian Scar that denied access to the ion power. 
The Guardians tell them that the Scarred Guardian was behind many manipulations throughout the Corps to facilitate Necron's plans and that she has paid for them with her death. But Guy and Cal say that there are other things that the Guardians have manipulated in the Corps, such as the creation of the Alpha Lantern Corps, the killing of unarmed Psycell prisoners after they rioted and were caught by the Corps. Cal also reminds them of the third law that they enacted, which made physical relationships between Lanterns forbidden. They tell the Guardians that by forbidding physical relationships, they force the resignation of dozens of veteran Lanterns who were unwilling to accept the new law, not because of love with another Lantern, but because they were devoted to the duty and the cause of the Green Lantern Corps, and that they should repeal the third law in order to prevent more resignations. The Guardians wonder why they should do that. Cal tells them that if they take away emotions from the Lanterns, then they are left with unthinking and uncaring machines which Guy reminds them of their failures with the Manhunters and the Alpha Lantern Corps. <laughs> the Guardians tell them that they will consider it, with Guy telling Arisia that she's his new favorite Lantern for decking one of the Guardians. <laughs> After the Lanterns leave, the Guardians open the Book of Oa and make their decision concerning the Third Law. Elsewhere on Oa, Guy sees his bar Warriors trashed. Guy is filled with grief since Warriors was one of his best ideas. He thinks that it's garbage, but Cal tells him that it's not garbage. It's just a place that needs to be cleaned and fixed up. He also tells Guy that rebuilding Warriors should be their first priority in fixing Oa, just as the rings announced that the Guardians have repealed the third law, banning physical relationships between Lanterns as we see Sornix smiling. Both men are glad that the Guardians have removed the law as they toast Warriors in the Green Lantern Court. All right. Thoughts? Uh, there was something missing in there that I really liked in this issue, hmm. and that was Salak. Oh, yeah. Uh, he has some sass to him, you know, basically saying, and, you know, what the core, you know, what they were telling the Guardians, like, look, you've got to earn our trust now. It's not just going to be given. And Salak was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be here to keep you guys honest, too. I serve the core. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I really, I really like that. That was a, that was a good scene. Oh, yeah, and, no, you know, Erisia direct, you know, slapped a guardian. Yeah, guardian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I do like that whole Salak thing. It's like, yeah, no one's bigger than the core, not even you guys. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, I think, we, I, mean, I think okay. we get the them trying to replace them with robots later or something. I I don't know. I, the guardians. I, how did the little blue guys live so long? I mean, they they, they... I know. Ooh, live wire. Let's touch it. <laughs> I mean, and on. I mean, I've seen this done many times, but I think this is one of the best like epilogues to a something that uh, mm -hmm. that's yeah. been done. I agree. They tie up a, a lot of, of really good stuff here, and you know, they even they deal with you know, um, Vath's Vath Sarn. Vanth, Vath, is it Vath? Vath, yeah. Vath. Him getting his legs off, saving another, you know, cut off, saving another lantern. So, you know, it's, it is a really good epilogue issue. Oh, yeah. And I, I guess, I, I don't remember the epilogue issue for Green Lantern. I guess that's next week, right? I guess, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember. Or do we roll right in the brightest? I can't remember yet, but yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 53 is next week. So, but yeah, I think this was. I thought this was a really got that Green Lantern issue, the Blackest Night issue, and this issue are all awesome this week. I mean, they're they're all three, you know, firing on all cylinders. Oh yeah, and one of the greatest, one of the greatest splashes of all time. They broke the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they broke it. <laughs> I did like when Dead Man took took him over and couldn't make the ring work, which I thought was weird because remember he actually took Kyle over mm -hmm. and made the ring made Kyle's ring work, which was interesting. Maybe I don't know. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I mean, unless we put more safeguards into the ring since uh, the mm -hmm. core the core's return. Yep, exactly. I mean, the, I, I mean that would make sense because almost like with Quasar's quantum bands, you know, trying to protect them from mental manipulations. It's like, yeah. oh, if someone's trying to manipulate your mind, that ring's going to shut down. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I mean, and it's it shows that they're 
you know, potentially learning, right? Which is good. Mm-hmm. And I, I have to say, I really kind of like, I like the way that Grant Morrison portrayed the Guardians, uh, you know, in, in The Green Lantern seasons right. one and two, because, you know, they're operating at a scale and a breadth of experience and at a level that we can't comprehend. And I feel like that's, if if I do have a criticism of of Jeff Johns' run, it's that Guardians seem to be very optimistic wise uh, in most of their you know <laughs> decisions. So I, you know, I would hope that being billions of years old, you know, you would have a little wisdom at this point, and still not necessarily. Uh, think that you know the uh the people that only live a few hundred years or a hundred years are you know don't have anything to add <laughs> yeah yeah i guess we're a billion years old you still have stuff to learn that's right got homework for the for eternity <laughs> oh. all right uh should we get the action comics you bet all right. Uh, and, and before you get before you get started on this one, I thought this was weird, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember reading this. This was weird. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Action Comics eight ninety, uh, August twenty ten, the Black Ring part one. Guess what? We're not going to get to the rest of it. Uh, writer Pete Paul <laughs> Corn- Cornell, uh, penciler and inker Pete Woods, the colorist Brad Anderson, letter Rob Lee, and editors Matt Idelson and Will Moss. <clears throat> covers for this issue were really, really good, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. I, really, I thought the covers were excellent. Oh, yeah. I thought the covers, the art was good, yeah. But, yeah, this story is weird. Mm-hmm. Lex Luthor is hanging over the side of a building. His three captors goad him, but Lex is quietly confident that he thinks uh, and he thinks back a week to when he taken full control of Lex Corps back. Lex has become consumed with desire, the desire for power. Hmm. Using all the skills of his research and development team, he has them try to locate lantern rings. One thing we know about Lex is that no is not in his vocabulary. When an employee tries to relay the impossibility of the task, Lex has him fired and blacklisted. In retaliation, the scientist cracks Lex over the head with a nearby ornament. Lex, days later, is enjoying a meal with his once upon an ex, Lois Lane. Lois questions him over the bruise, and her comments drive the CEO to order a hit on the former employee. Oddly enough, Lex draws a line under the whole thing. Uh, Lex, Lois makes him stop and think, even challenging him as an overreacting fool for his quest. Although angry at Lois's comments, he reminisces to a time as an orange ring bearer during the blackest night. He admits to Lois that his lust for power is his jealousy to be a Superman. So much so he even had he has even had CGI simulations created to see what would happen if he still owned a ring, or all of them even. He would <laughs> he would become better than anyone, more powerful than any metahuman. Lois spots something in this simulation. Lionel Luther, long dead, which brings Lex on to his next point. Black Lantern Rings. Those resurrecting rings dissipated in the energy and began to fade when the battle was won. That energy isn't gone. It's out there with the building blocks of their power, ready for Lex. The morning of the kidnapping, Lex is inspecting the damage left behind after the 100-minute war. He and his assistant Spalding comment on Superman's journey across America, which he never finished. Lex surmises <laughs> Superman's quest for more power. Lex is confident that by the end of Superman's quest, he will have acquired the power to surpass his enemy. Activating sensors, he looks over uh, data catchment, unrivaled monitoring equipment he hadn't used since Superman's first appearance. Superman and his allies are all under close watch, to a degree. Supergirl is a red and blue blur in the Metropolis skies. Steel has become reclusive, but still attempts to ease earwig LexCore intel. Superboy is, for some reason, sticking to Smallville. Mr. Luther will order Spalding to activate the isopod, an untested holographic memory organizer and scenario calculator, which draws data from the web and its inhabitants, in this case, Lex. The data collected reviews a ripple effect off energy caused by the disintegrating black lantern rings 
Lex is able to fashion a treasure map to all the sources of energy he could need to make his own ring. Lex powers up his battle suit and peels Lois's skin off to reveal an adapted Brainiac probot. Uh, it turns out Lex fashioned the Lois Fembot to be his voice of reason, but before there could be a further investigation, the kidnapping begins. Even Lois going all Terminator 3 on the assailants, they still manage to grab Lex, and then we're back to the present with Lex over a building. Two of the kidnappers are silent, but the last one is a little too talkative and begins to beg itself not to die. That doesn't work, and he begins to rip off, rip his own flesh off to reveal who he is from within his human cocoon. Mr. Mind. Thoughts? <laughs> um, it, this one was weird, and I'm, I'm, while you were reading that, I was looking up Superman walking across America. Yes. Wow, okay, that's... Uh... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I did Jay not Michael know Straczynski, that. J. Michael Straczynski, and he never even finished the damn thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that pretty much almost went to, to New Fifty Two, but I think there was like a quick little mini arc or two because I don't know for some reason I don't know if Straczynski left or something for some reason. But so yeah, then they did like a quick mini arc or two, and then it was on the New Fifty Two. So, wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 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 Um. Yeah, I thought the art was great on this one. Um, it had uh, this issue had almost a maniacal energy to it. it yeah, just seemed crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It's Slex almost seems too, a little too unfocused in this thing. Maybe it's maybe mm -hmm. it's the exposure to the to the orange ring. But I'm just like, I don't know. I'm used to him being more calculated and like laser focused on his objective you know so versus nuts <laughs> yeah so, uh, oh what am i doing uh what am i doing uh besides my uh lowest bot i don't know <laughs> yeah it's like what the that's like yeah, this great. Is... that's like <laughs> this one was a weird issue um do you know how how does it end I mean, it's Mr. Oh, Mind. Oh, this is another one. I forget. Oh, I'll have to get back to you on that. Yeah. We'll have to, we'll have to look that up for next time, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this is the only one that's branded Blackest Night Aftermath or whatever. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, this was the only one on the list. So, hmm. uh, wait, let me look at the app. Yeah, I'll look it up real quick. Well, and again, I mean, I guess some of the next one may be considered aftermath, even though it's just him looking for those rings. There we go, eight ninety one. Yeah, it's not. It's not on the cover. Nope. Okay. Wild. Very wild. Exactly. Uh, I don't know what the heck's going on in this next issue. <laughs> Again, this, this is another one I think I read once or twice, and that was it. <laughs> huh. Okay. Yeah, a little different than I was... Uh, yeah, it was definitely different than I was expecting. I don't know. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. But again, the art was spectacular. Pete Woods is an awesome artist. So. Oh, yeah. All right, so are you ready to bring this thing home? Yes. 13 weeks have all been leading to, well, Black Night number eight. But this is the aftermath, so there we go. <laughs> 13 weeks have been leading up to this final issue, which I don't have a synopsis for. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, but here, I can do the credits. Uh, no, 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 no. Until what, like four or five stories, I think? Uh, I think, so. yeah, it's, what is it? Sea of Fear, Deleted Scenes from Blackest Night, Evolution of the Species, A Losing Battle, Blackest Nightmare, An Incident on Korgar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but here. And, me... and a preview of Superman Earth One. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, here, I can do some credits, though. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Sea of Fear was written by Peter Tomasi, uh, pencil Patrick Gleason, uh, inker Sandra Hope, colorist Brian Buscelletto, uh, letterer Steve Want, and editor Eddie Berganza. All right. So should we? Should I do the credits as we do each story? <laughs> yeah, let's do that. All right. <laughs> All right. So yeah, the first one, Sea of Fear. Uh, 
when I'm scrolling backwards here. Um, yeah, which one was that one? Um, hold on. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Uh, oh, is that the one with uh, Lissy? Uh, is that the one with uh, Lissy uh, Drac or whatever? Yeah. No, I thought that was the one with uh, the incident on Korrigar because she. Uh, had her... Oh wait, no, she's the one with her dogs with her. Her her dog constructs. That's a different one. Yeah, yeah. this is this is her trying to escape that black. Uh, bull, uh, oh yeah, that's right. Look at the black lantern or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because some of these stories aren't that long. They're almost some of them are only two or three pages. Mm-hmm. And then there were some cut. The, then we have the cut pages from Blackest Night, like the Ragman pages. Um. Oh yeah, because uh, Rag yeah, because Black Hand shows up and basically uh, I don't know, but pulls the souls out of Ragman's uh. Mm-hmm. Rags and renders them powerless. Yeah, because that one's by Jeff Johns and penciler Ivan Reyes, Eau Claire Elbert, yep. Rod Reyes. Yeah, yeah. Some of these aren't that long. Oh, not a one. Uh, and the the other deleted scene is uh, oh, is it the new rogues or whatever? Uh, Oh, they they kill oh, themselves, no. don't oh, they? The Rainbow Raiders or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They kind of basically yeah. drink the Kool Aid and kill themselves. Yeah. Mm. And then we get the story, uh, the Animal Man story, the evolution of species. Mm-hmm. With the dead animals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, then an Animal Man basically just hearing a voice: "Why are you still alive?" Mm-hmm. And then, and then he becomes a Black Lantern. Yeah, he was in there that, in that battle when they're all fighting the Black Lanterns, yeah. And then he gets resurrected. And we get a hint at he has a mission now. Uh-huh. Mm. And I guess he kind of had a weird thing with Starfire. I guess, I don't know. I, I don't remember where that came from, so... Yeah. Wait, was that... Was that during um, Infinite Crisis? Maybe, maybe was it Infinite Crisis? Yeah, I think when they were off and weren't they part of a team off in space or something? Yeah, mm-hmm. that takes me back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then a losing battle was the whole Dawn of Troy uh, again, mm-hmm. and the Titans. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, basically she's saying kill. You know, when she was infected, kill me, and they're like, nah. You know. Pains her not not gonna happen. Yep. yep. <laughs> and then Dove tried to save her, but then Neron Necron, sorry, Neron. Yeah, kind of blasts everybody. Yeah. yeah, that's when he turns Superman and Wonder Woman to black, and then they all get flipped back over when uh, Hal grabs the White Lantern and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. In, in number eight. Uh, and then what is it? Blackest Nightmares, the Scarecrow story. Yeah, <laughs> kind of see a flashback to his origins as he's like terrorizing people, and then that ring shows up. Mm-hmm. And Batman, kind of. <laughs> kind of, yes. Uh, Batman, my favorite character. Mm-hmm. Welcome to see this. Yeah, uh, we uh, we see that when the yellow ring picks that scarecrow. Mm, then the incident on Korrigar. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's a uh, car- carousel. Yeah. Ah, okay. Mm. Oh, yeah, the black lady, there's black lady, and what dogs hunting her, and then she's yeah, basically saved by a uh, Green Lantern. Zavrailio Z- Z- of uh, Sector 1013. Who uh, gets thanked for his uh, help. Like everybody's <laughs> head blown off yet. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then more Alicia Drack. Uh, she gets pulled out. Oh, who, did we explain who, is pull, who this is that pulled her out of the book? I think it's Krona, but I'm not uh, certain of that. Yeah. Because that's setting up the war of the 
or the Green Lanterns, oh. I think, at the end of this run. Because it end, I think the end of Green Lantern is 64? Uh, 67? Uh, something 64. like that. Might, might be 67. Yeah, it's something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And spoilers, Cronus a bad guy. So. <laughs> That's right, you know. Yeah, he, he. I mean, he's a he's a pretty well known bad guy. You have to hand it to him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, All right, Mister William. Any uh, thoughts on uh, our, our? I think we. I think we gave a lot of them. But any other thoughts on our journey to get here on the other side of black this night? No, there were, you know, I think every week, even even when we were less than thrilled with some of those limited series, Mm -hmm. every week was still really good. There was lots of good stuff every week. I mean, and yeah, there were some misfires, some of the, you know, resurrected series. Well, I think that was great. Yeah. some of them didn't necessarily have a whole lot or were so different than what was going on in regular Black Night that they just they didn't feel like they fit. But uh, I mean, overall, it's still it's an it's an amazing achievement. You know, I mean, how many we're talking eighty something issues here, eighty seven, ninety something like that. It was a it's a bunch of issues and. You know, pulled it off. You know, so bravo to the creative teams, the editorial, and everything because this thing, this thing was great. All right, all right. So, should we uh, see where we're going next time? You bet. <laughs> well, you know where we're going, kids. Brightest Day, because uh, next time we're going to cover Brightest Day 0 and 1 and Green Lantern 53 through 55. So there you go. We've got a lot Bright- to read. Brightest Day. <laughs> Max went into a code oh. edition. And if, if, we could, if we could go behind the scenes a little bit, show I guess talk about a little, how the sausage was made. Brightest Day has a tremendous number of crossovers, okay? Um, (laughs) Yes. Uh, The Justice League uh, Generation Lost, which I think is 26 issues, every one of those is a Brightest Day crossover. So I don't want to speak for you, but we kind of wanted to focus in on the core of Brightest Day here instead of getting eight issues of Aquaman and 26 issues of Justice League the flash loss yeah the flash re you know relaunch at that point and uh, at least that's my my no, I, I, I agree with you because i was looking at some of those like all those flash issues i'm like i don't i don't know if a green lantern shows up in these at all you know and it was just like yeah 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 no so I, yeah we're basically going to focus on the on the brightest day series the green lantern books uh what, like I said, the one episode we're going to do uh, the Justice uh, uh, League of America and Justice Society of America crossover because it involves Alan Scott and Jade and the Star Heart. So, mm, yep. So that's what you can expect from Brightest Day coming coming down the the, the pipe or the pike. Well, I don't know which is it. The pike. I think it's coming down the pike. I uh, think so. Yes. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, we made it, man. We made yes, it. Yes, <laughs> I know. I know. It seemed so far away at the beginning. I know. Uh huh. Absolutely. And you know what? Hmm. I can. I, I, I I'm having a vision of next week. We're gonna have actual Green Lanterns on our background. It's gonna yes. be. Yes. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. I can hear. You want me to flip it now? I mean, yeah, we can. Let's do, do it. Let's do yeah. it. All right. You ready? Ready? We're back. We're back. We're no longer the black the Black Lantern plot podcast. Yes. We are the Green Lantern podcast. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. So next next week we'll start our uh, brightest day coverage, which will take us to pretty much the end of June. <laughs> nice. So blackest night, brightest day, half of twenty twenty four. Yes. <laughs> 
Nice. Uh, at which point we'll start the um, only well, only three weeks of War of the Green Lanterns. <laughs> <laughs> Not, well, so what, are oh, no, we? Oh hitting... no, four parts. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. When are when are we hitting New Fifty Two? New Fifty Two. We will begin on the third week of August. Well, it'll it'll hit the podcast. Interesting. That's cool uh-huh. because. I have read, I know I read up all the way to War of the Green Lanterns, and I may have read one or two issues of New 52, but, and I, so I, there's a huge, ch- once, once we hit New 52, I'm uh, in un- undiscovered country at that point, so I'm really kind of looking forward to, you know, reading all that stuff for the first time. Oh, nice. Plus we have two additional titles, Red Lanterns and New Guardians. That's right. That's right. And we'll cover like uh, some a few guest appearances in New Fifty Two. Like there's a Blue Beetle issue. Uh, cool. Stormwatch. Oh wow. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, because they tried to fold that in. Yeah. Nice. Um. I do want to uh, cause cause Phil got me thinking about this with that panel, Millennium. So, uh, when is our 200th episode coming up? Because we're doing a series, 199, 200, and 201, right? Where we're... No, 200, uh, 200, 201, and 202 is the Christmas episode. There we go. Okay. Christmas episode. That's right. 200, 201, and 202. Getting us to 203, where we will start anew with the new year. Um What's that? Hold What's on. That? Uh, yeah, Wrath of the First Lantern. There we go. Yeah, which is yeah. the final story of Jeff Johns, I believe, on Green Lantern. So, yeah, lots of cool stuff coming up, and we'll have a we'll have a nice retro episode talking about Millennium, which is oddly uh, on topic right now for Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> are, are we doing that on one episode, one episode or two? I don't know. We'll have, we're, we're still yeah, talking about that, I mean, right? <laughs> at, least, at least 200. Maybe 201 kids, 201 maybe something else. We will but, see, yeah. <laughs> but 202 is definitely the Christmas episode. <laughs> nice. Very nice. We All did right. it, man. We are through the blackest night. Congratulations, sir. All right. <laughs> All right. These old men have to get to bed. So, All right. So. That's right. <laughs> Send us all, yeah, send us your thoughts on everything we covered in Blackest Night, all the upcoming Brightest Day, and anything else. Uh, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com, or call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise. Uh, use the Cash App link, the Rain Ran the Money on Us, and, of course, the Patreon, where, yes, you never know what's going to... You're going to get, uh, like, March will be Little Hellfire Conspiracy Theories. Uh, so, yes, yeah, subscribe. If you want to know if you want to know why birds aren't real, yes, subscribe to the, uh, if you want to know <laughs> the secrets of the universe, yes, you must subscribe to the Patreon. So, yes, so find it all at tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. That's tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. More vicious and brutal than ever. All right, now, Mr. Will Allred, master of the core, master of the quantum zone, master of podcasting, master of several (laughs) successful Kickstarter uh, (laughs) campaigns. Where can people talk to you? Uh, You can find me at Wallred. That's at W-A-L-L-R-E-D at Gmail and Twitter and Facebook and Blue Sky and other social media that I've probably forgotten that I set up. Uh, If you'd like to check out the comics that I write, you can do that. Crossover Division is at crossoverdivision.com, which we, uh, like Phil said, we just finished the Kickstarter for issue number five, and uh, we should be going to print with that very, very soon. And you can also check out Diary of Night at diaryofnight.com, uh, which uh, we've got uh, a trade paperback of that for, of that four issue series available as well. And uh, if you uh, if you're here listening to Phil and I, you've obviously got great taste. That means you probably love Marvel's Quasar almost as much as we do. Uh, so if you want to find out more about that, you can do that at the Quantum Zone, quantumzone.org. I'll put it in my navel. 
And speaking of, if you love Quasar, yes, uh, stay tuned over on Capes and the regular Capes and Lunatics feed. Yes, Will and I are going to be talking Quasar once again with our friend Justin uh, for episode 65 and 66 of Marvel Tales. So I am looking forward to it. I always like introducing that story to new readers yes. and getting perspective on it, you know, because I'm really, really excited to see what Justin thinks about it. Yeah. And again, it's like, it, it's going to be different because one, we did it over here for the first time. Now we're going to do it over there. But two, remember we were going week by an issue at a time. This time we're yep. taking it in two, ch- two halves. Yep. Awesome. So some more perspective. Hey, you boys, you look at the party. I love the party. <laughs> they aren't even attempting to enter our orifices. <laughs> I, of course, love how Jordan. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us, kids. Oh, well, hopefully you've been here since episode one, but at least you're for joining us through Blackest Night. We survived all those Black Lantern zombies. Yes. <laughs> Now we have to deal with all these resurrected fools. That's right. <laughs> so that's right, kids. Black, uh, Brightest Day, 0 and 1, and then Green Lantern, 53 through 55. And again, that's going to take us almost to completely through June. So. All right, join us next time. And remember... Uh, and getting sawed in half doesn't uh, stop the mightiest of egos. Good night. <laughs>